Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the SecondAdam.com. And I want to welcome you, your online church, this evening. We're going to be brief, but I wanted to take a moment and introduce you to someone that's behind the scenes that has made with me almost every decision with the SecondAdam.com and really is the one that came up with the name the SecondAdam.com and actually, actually put that in place with us. And that is Ron Bachelor. Thanks for being with us. This Thank is you. my. One of my best friends, our chaplain, and many of you, you've either spoken to him or he's prayed for you. Many times the prayer requests come in, he's prayed for you to create to the kingdom of you if you knew it or not. And so uh, he happened to be in Wilmington today, and I said, hey, let's go ahead and just shoot another episode of The Second Adam. So thanks again for being on with us on the online church. If you missed the past episodes, go back. Be sure to go back. Check them out. On the second item, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to us. If you're watching this on Roku, yes, <clears> thanks <throat> to our faithful partners, we'll be on Roku. Uh, you may be watching this on Roku, so thanks and welcome aboard on that as well. Now, today we're going to do something a little different. As always, if you need prayer, go to the secondatom.com, place your prayer request. We're going to pray over you, decree the kingdom of God over you. If you need any prophetic ministry, check us out there as well. Those who want to pay your love offerings, your tithes, go to theofferingplate.com, theofferingplate.com. So today we're talking about <clears throat> the kingdom of God and everything the kingdom is. And, you know, it's just it's more than we can fathom. But uh, I just want to let Rome share from his heart just a few minutes with you about the kingdom of God and whatever's on his heart. You know, we, me and Rome talk every day and we talk about business, we talk about ministry, we talk about life, we talk about Jesus, we talk about Holy Spirit, and, and so we're just going to take a few minutes today, and I want to introduce you to Rome as part of the thesecondatom.com, and, and Rome, what, just what's God placed on your heart like that you want to share with, with Well, um, a lot of people are just asking and asking and asking, and, and it's good, asking you shall receive, but I believe sometimes asking uh, and you shall receive could have more than one meaning, just like so many things and principles in the Word of God, one verse could apply to many situations and mean many things because God is just that good. Yeah. And so, right. Right. so uh, I believe that a lot of times, you know, the promises of God are yea and amen. And it's not that we um, sometimes don't have enough faith to ask for it, but sometimes we just don't have enough faith to receive what God's trying to give us. That's good. And yeah. and I think we should ask. I, I, I believe that. Obviously, the Word of God says to ask and you shall receive. But it also, uh, you know, there, there was a teaching by Kenneth Hagin that says, speak it, do it, receive it, and tell it. And how the Lord showed him in a vision once. Um, he called it a vision. It almost sounded like a visitation. That, that those are, That's an outline to receive from the Lord. And he explains it in his little book, How to Write Your Own Ticket with God, if you want to reference that. However, um, I just, you know, I started dwelling on this and and learning about this and meditating on this and, and just sort of receiving insight in this area on how to receive. And I believe that sometimes we need to renew our mind, not just by our uh, reading the Word of God or professing the Word of God, but sometimes or making, uh, you know, decrees or claiming or something standing on. Sometimes it's we work too hard at it. Yeah. And I think sometimes we need to just say, you know what? God is already convinced. I can let go of my past. I've been forgiven. The slate is clean. You know, I, I think it was Kenneth Hagin also that said sometimes we need to just act like the Word of God is true. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And I think that we need to uh, sometimes just, relax, say, thank you, God, for forgiving me, because, you know, we need to repent, we need to say thank you, Lord, and we need to mean it, but, you know, after that point, I think we need to just receive it and just say, okay, I believe God meets, loves me like he says he does, and I believe he's washed my slate clean, and now I don't need to worry about do I deserve his goodness or not in my life, that the Jesus said, when you go out, preach and say, the kingdom of heaven's at hand. I believe the kingdom is to a lot extent, maybe not to its fullness, but to a bigger extent. And sometimes we realize the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom is now to a great degree. And therefore, I think we just need to receive the blessings because I believe that what the devil stole, Jesus bought back plus some. Yeah. 
And in the garden, what was God's intent? It was peace. It was joy. It was provision. It was uh, relationships. It was it was really just a fun, prosperous, peaceful, safe relationshiping situation where uh, there was not worries and fears and lack, and there was abundance more than they could ever discover in a in, in a normal modern lifetime. Yeah. And and I think certainly the devil tempted Adam and Eve out of that. And I think Christ has restored that plus some, but we have to learn to receive. And sometimes we can blanket it, but I think sometimes we need to renew our mind according to the word of God and the promises of God in areas that our life is falling short of that goodness of God. And in order to do that, maybe we need a revelation of his grace, love, and mercy Maybe we're getting into some people like Joseph Prince's teachers to help yeah, us receive good. that. But once we get that down, and even before that and in that process, if, for example, I'm lacking an ideal job for me, this is something I just went through. I just started confessing, not that I have the ideal job, because I know that's God's will. I don't have to convince him. I was asking, I just thank him. Lord, thank you for the ideal job for me right now. Just thanking him for it. And you can even ask. You know, why did the Lord bring me the perfect ideal job for me so quickly? Yeah. Why did good. the Lord bring me the ideal job for me so quickly? I didn't say perfect because we're still in the flesh. It's not going to be perfect, but it can be ideal. And I think good. that's realistic good. and I think it's believable. And instead of saying I have the ideal job, how about thanking him, Lord, thank you for the ideal job. And thank you for bringing it to me so quickly as if we believe the word of God is true. It's true. It's true. And for our own mind to just receive it. Why did the Lord bring me the ideal job so quickly? Why? And like for me, you know, I started confessing the same thing. It's really a question. Uh, there's an author called Noah St. John that writes about it. You can look him up. But I believe that sometimes questions are the answer. Tony Robbins talks about that. I'm not trying to get into that too much, but sometimes questions are the answer. Sometimes we have to ask so that we may receive, which is what we're talking about. So now, every one of you that have made that great decision and said, you know what, I'm a coach with you, Wayne. I'm a counselor with you, Wayne. Now you know why I talk about questions on the answer. <laughs> because me and Ron <laughs> talk about it a lot. The Word of God says it is His good pleasure to bring you to kingdom. We just have to say yes. Today we took Lily and Layla and the other, we took all four girls to the toy store. And I don't know what we were thinking there, you know, thank God for grace. But we took them all four to the toy store. And Lily and Layla I said, you, you're not going to get a present right now, but just maybe. You know, I kind of hinted that maybe they were going to get something. So they were determined they were not. They were like, okay, we're not getting anything. They go, well, can we look? Can we look? I said, sure, we can look. But I knew I was buying them a present. I just wanted to. So before they got out, they got some little stuffed animal that there was everything in their life for five minutes and they've already forgot about it since then but it was my good <laughs> pleasure it was my good pleasure to give them something from their kingdom of the toy store and if you look at a father that way i'm an imperfect father we look at our perfect father that says it's my good pleasure to give you what you think maybe i can just look at maybe i can just look at that vacation home maybe i can just think about going to paris or italy or whatever Maybe I can just think about seeing my family saved, and, and maybe I can just think about it. Can I just look, Dad? He's going, yeah, 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 yeah. And the whole time, he wants to give you the kingdom. All they had to do was agree to it. So I asked him, even even, even Lily said, why do we still have these, these toys? I said, do you want it? Do you want it? She said, yes. I said, then ask. And, and it's yours. Ask and it's yours. So we have a heavenly father that wants to do that as well. But you're right. We've got to believe the word of God is the word of God. And it, <laughs> it is real. Because we, we say a lot of things in our, our daily walk. And those who coach with me, you've heard me say questions are the answer. And so a question, when you ask yourself the right questions, what it does, number one, is it connects you back with God. But it also corrects the unconscious thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, the stinking thinking, you know, we're thinking 1500 words a minute, 80% of it's unconscious. And if it's wrong, if it's in the wrong direction, we get the wrong result. And so we have to redirect that back to Ephesians 1, 3. You have been, past tense, blessed with all spiritual blessings. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Remember the Lord thy God. It is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Find the verses that give you the promises that you're looking for and hold on to them. That's one great way of renewing mm -hmm. the word. 
is to hold on to. You don't have to know the whole Bible. You don't have to know it from Genesis <laughs> to Revelation. Know the author of it. That's the key. Know the one who inspired it. Know Holy Spirit. And uh, yeah, but I've learned that we've talked about this a lot about the way we ask the questions. And uh, what was the author's name again of the book? Noah St. John. Noah St. John. The great, I read the book, couldn't remember the author, but um, knowing the way we ask questions is how we will receive. If you look even, even Adam and Eve were tempted, but it was, it was a statement from the enemy and then it was a question from the enemy. Mm -hmm. Has surely God, has God surely said? You know, so, and even then in the same, when in the uh, desert, when Jesus was there with Satan. He said, if you're the son of God, he was questioning his identity. So we have to go back and look. Questions are all the answer. If you ask the right questions, you'll get the right answers every single time. And if you mess up, you miss it. We all miss it, guys. Then you say, hey, Lord, I missed it. And I thank you for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Place me back on track. I've missed it more than once. So but I've said, Lord, I missed it. I missed it. Help me get back on track. And the Lord's just sitting there going, I got you, son. I've got you, daughter. We're going to move you back on track. So those who do counsel and coach with us, those who um, trust us for that, uh, next time we talk, remember, remember to bring it up. Why are questions the answer? And I will go even deeper into some, into scientific reasons behind that. So, mm -hmm. uh, Ron, what do you, when you, you know, you walk through this daily life through relationships, through finances, through identity, uh, what do you feel like God is saying to the body now? If you if you had to say prophetically, this is what I feel like the Lord is saying to the body now. Is there, you know, any certain area that you feel like mm -hmm. is really heavy, that, at least in your life and the people that you're in? <clears throat> I really feel like the Lord is wanting his children now to really believe him and trust at a higher level and stand up and mature. The world is needing the revelation of 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 who God is and it starts with us. And I think the world is groaning like the Bible said for the manifestation of the children of God to stand up and take authority over what's going on at a, at a, in a, at a level that's maybe potentially never uh been so important as it is right now, so urgent as it is right now. And I I believe we will we will achieve that purpose. I believe that's going to happen. But I, I think in, to a degree, everything is holding up, waiting on the body of Christ to mature. Mm. And this is like birthing pains that we're going through right now. I mean, you know, never in the world has the threat of so much nuclear powers. I mean, us growing up and taking our place and taking authority over the situations in the world. You know, when I pray the Lord's Prayer, I, I pause in between and I say, Father, you know, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven right now and over the coming elections that your will be done from the White House to the courthouses to the sheriff's departments to the Capitol building to the state legislatures and to the, you know, to the yeah. governor's yeah. mansions all the way through into the homes and families of this country and to the leaders in the body of Christ that we stand up and that uh, the people that are, you're waiting on them to mature to become leaders and take their place, that they come into that place in reality that they don't have to wait on somebody else endorsing them. You, Lord, have endorsed them and bring them to that realization and let us stand up to maturity. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's another thing too. I know we're we're gonna we're gonna stay off the politics tonight. I just really wanted to jump into, but but politics is part of the kingdom. Everything is part of the kingdom. You know, look at Lance Wallow and the and the Seven Mountains. When, and then, so whatever side you're on, whatever mm -hmm. side you're on, the right side, the wrong side, <laughs> whatever. Um, here's what I want you to pray. What what wrong just said here? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. See, God's will be done. Uh, a lot of times I'm not, I'm unsure where to pray. I can look at the political leaders. I can look at social issues we're going through, and I'm unsure where to pray. And, you know, I'm saying prophetically, Lord, I, I hear you. Prophetically, I feel you. But then I want to know that I am praying properly. So my prayer is let there be light because mm -hmm. light will dispel darkness. Light will dispel darkness. We walked into this church earlier and in, in this studio and it was dark. We had to turn on the lights. We had to get the, we had, to, we had to turn on the lights and, you know, really just bring light because there was darkness in here, not evil darkness, but just physical darkness. But so it is in the world today. Our political leaders, our business leaders, there's a lot of darkness. Let there be light. It's a mm -hmm. prophetic decree. 
those of you, you're praying over your family. There's some of you right now, you're praying over your grandchildren. In fact, you're saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. I've sent in prayer requests. I've prayed. I don't know what to do. Here's what you need to do. Just decree. Let there be light over them. Let there be light. And Holy Spirit, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to woo them back. I don't know how you're going to break off the hand of the enemy, but I'm so thankful that you are. And it's almost like a place of curiosity. Those who've counseled with me, you've heard me say this. Faith is like curiosity. It's curiosity. It's that knowing there's a present here. I don't know what it is, but I know it's good. That's faith. At Christmas, you know, looking at a child under a tree, is that my present? Yeah. Can I get it? Can I have it? Is it Christmas? There's never any fear that there's something going to harm. That's the way it is with God. Lord, I don't know what you're going to do this in an election. Or I don't know what you're going to do in this upcoming business venture. I don't know what you're going to do with Rome's ideal job, but I do know you're God and you're good. And if that's true, it's almost like I can be curious about it, anxious, but not anxious in a bad way, just expectation. There's something good coming here. And so if we can learn to walk in that, and that's the thing, it's a daily walk. Mm -hmm. It's a daily walk because the enemy comes against you. He's doing his job to bring doubt and fear. Just laugh at him. Just laugh at him and say, say, you have no power here. I'm a child. I'm a king's kid. Recently, in fact, just a few minutes before we started the uh, show, I gave Rome back a book that he gave me, or he let me borrow. Now, um, how many, 15 years ago? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, how to Live Like a King's Kid. And uh, that book really touched me 15 years ago. I pulled it out the other day and read it, and I said, I've got to get this back to Rome. So I <laughs> uh, finally did 15 right. years later. But, you know, live like a king's kid. Live like a king's kid. Understand what that royalty, what the promises of a son and daughter really mean. So, um, any other thoughts before we before we close up? We wanted to keep this sermon short. I really wanted to introduce you to Rome. Um, with his permission, I'll place his contact information in the subtitle below, so you'll be able to contact Rome if you want to shoot him an email. If you send a prayer request into the second Adam, he's praying for you. He's decreeing over you. We're here for you. And uh, but any other thoughts before we? Close I, I do want to. I, I I can hear somebody asking me because I've heard it asked to me before. What's the difference between a statement and a question? Well, the mind doesn't think in statements. It doesn't think in words. It thinks in pictures and it thinks in evaluation. And an evaluation is what does this mean? How do I do this? X, actually, an evaluation is nothing more than an unconscious quick question in the back of your mind that carries with it an image that symbolizes what that means to you. Mm. And so you can renew your mind unconsciously in your spirit, man. It thinks in evaluations, it thinks in, in, in images. And when it's hard to just force a new image when your brain is wired incorrectly to images that are not of the kingdom. So when you can just ask a question, you can reprogram your mind a little easier, a lot easier, a lot faster to the Word of God with the right kind of question that presupposes that the Word of God is true, that God is for you, not against you, and that He has already blessed you because we are seated in high places in Christ Jesus. See, it's a already is. That's it. That's good. That's good. Guys, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Be sure to do something. Follow us. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this on Facebook, subscribe to us. Share this video. Share this sermon. Somebody needs to see this. Somebody needs to know who they are in Christ. And you can really sow into the kingdom by clicking the share button. It's amazing. Also, if you're following this on Roku, be sure to follow us. Be back next week for our upcoming sermon. And again, prayer request, thesecondadam.com. Be sure also to check us out on Facebook. We do a Facebook prayer ministry four or five days a week. We're up 5.30, 6.30 in the morning. We're starting our day in prayer, and we're praying for you, so be sure to follow us there as well. Theofferingplate.com, if you want to sell your love offers, your tithes. Um, I want to pray over you. In fact, every one of you. If you've sown into the ministry, I want to pray over your seed. If you've sent a prayer request in, I want to come into agreement that your prayers will be answered according to the will of God. So, Father God, I thank you for everyone watching this. I thank you for everyone that is following the ministry, every supporter of the ministry. Every seed produces after its own kind, according to your words. So every financial seed will let financial abundance pour back into their life. Every seed, hallelujah, of time 
They read an article. They shared an article. They just watched this sermon. Lord, they spent their time back into your kingdom. Give them more time back in their life. As they have honored the work of the Lord, Lord, honor them, I pray. I speak over marriages, and I say be healed in Jesus' name. I speak over, I see somebody, really, this is really important. I want to pray right now over your body. There's been, it's like one symptom after another, after another, after another. The doctor can't tell you what it is. It's the enemy coming with a spirit of infirmity. We break that in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood over that. Here's what I want you to do. If you're watching this, you know who you are. Just say, Lord, I thank you for the blood that has healed mm-hmm. me of all diseases. And you just keep saying that all day long. And you watch as you begin to notice. Maybe tomorrow you can get up a little quicker. Maybe the next day you feel a little better. You had to breathe better. There's also two people I feel like as you're watching this. One is, you know, it's emphysema, it's COPD. And now I'm speaking right now. Just start deep, taking deep breaths, deep breaths, because God wants to heal you. He wants to heal you. So just say, Lord, I'll receive my healing in Jesus' mm-hmm. name. Do you know how how many people we've seen healed on Facebook? We've seen healed through these through these video sermons. We believe that God can heal you where you're at. Just say, Lord, I receive it in Jesus' mighty name. And I plead the blood over every one of you. Lord, we thank you. We honor you in Jesus' perfect and holy name. Amen and amen. Guys, again, thanks for being with us. Be sure to share this video. Be sure to be here with us next Sunday, the second Adam dot TV, the second Adam dot com. God bless. To be able to minister personally with the pastor of this online church by text and phone, that is amazing. Partnership with this ministry is a great idea. If you're tired of feeling stuck in your life, then go ahead and coach with Wayne. Partner with the ministry and watch your life change. I highly recommend becoming a partner with this ministry. Um, you know, the mentorship program is just the best decision you can ever make. So. Uh, So yeah, thanks again.